Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I am Arif, your cloud learning journey partner. In today's video, we're gonna cover a very interesting topic that is how to do an automated backup of your EC2 servers. Suppose you have multiple EC2 servers in your prod environment and you want to have a setup that will take care of this backup. So it will create the automated backups, it will store it in a single region, and you also want to replicate this backup to another region. Uh, a good question could be why we need to replicate our server backups to another region? Well, the answer is suppose uh, for some reason, if the whole environment goes down in AWS, then you can always uh, go to the secondary region where you do have the backups. You can use those backups to restore your data and uh, recreate your application and uh, serve your uh, uh, clients. So for a DR, just recovery, uh, having a that's, uh, database backup and the servers backup in secondary region is very important. Well, uh, after watching to this video, you will know exactly how to do this automated backup. And the good part is once it is set up, you don't have to worry about it anymore. It will just do the work in the back end. Isn't it cool? Okay, so before starting the video, I just want to talk about myself. Well, I'm Arif. I do have more than eight years of experience in cloud computing. I hold multiple certification in AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, and beside that, I also hold CISSP and CCSP certification. Well, this channel is all about cloud computing, cybersecurity, and uh, uh, IT career-related advice. And if you are interested in this field, this channel is definitely for you. I'm planning to upload uh, tons of videos related to these topics. So please like and subscribe to my channel so you can see my upcoming videos. So without further delay, let's get started. I have already logged into my personal AWS account and from the search menu, I'll look for EC2. So this is the EC2 console. And uh, at first what I'll do, I'll just create an EC2 server real quick. And after that, we'll set up the automated backup procedure. Well, uh, in my previous videos, I explained in details like how to create the EC2 server. So if you are new to this channel and you are uh, interested to learn more about EC2 servers, uh, then please uh, uh, look uh, for that particular video. I'm going to add the video link under my video description and you can get it from there. So at the very first, I'm going to click launch instance in here and uh, I'll call it test server and the instance type. So uh, I'm gonna just go with the T2 micro cause T2 micro is under the AWS free tier and as is just only for tutorial. So I just want to keep uh, you know, the free version. So after that, I need to select a key pair for my EC2 server and I'm gonna choose this test key. And then the network settings, I'll go with the default config for now and for the Security group, I will keep it open because after this video, I'm going to just delete it anyway. So uh, for that, I'm just uh, allowing all SSH access from anywhere. So whenever we uh, specify 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, that means we are allowing to SSH into our EC2 servers from any IP address from anywhere in this world. So it's uh, risky a little bit, but this is for more of a tutorial. So that's why I just keep it uh, open. And after this video, I'm just gonna delete that. Uh, all right, so after that, uh, here we have to uh, uh, configure the storage. So uh, a good question could be uh, why we need uh, storage for our server. Well, uh, in order to uh, configure the operating system and stuff, uh, we need to have a storage. Even if we store a file or something inside our server, we need to have a e storage. In AWS, term, whenever we're talking about storage for EC2 server, we're referring to, to EBS volume. So right now, exactly we're creating this EBS volume. We're defining it in here. So um, the size of the EBS volume uh, could be 8 GB and I'm gonna choose uh, GP2 for this video. And uh, let's uh, look into the advanced digital section. So uh, here are some advanced details and uh, we're gonna go with the default setting for this video. And after this, now the summary is we are creating one EC2 server and the image that we're uh, using that is uh, uh, Linux 
because uh, if you see by default always uh, we are choosing this AWS Linux uh, image and the server type is T2Micro which is under the free tier and we defined uh, one ABS volume with 8 GB so everything looks good for my side and now I'm gonna just hit click uh, launch instance all right in the back end the server is being created it takes uh, at least uh, three to five minutes so if I go in here under the instances right now we can see it's under impending state uh, so we have to wait till this uh, status checks passes one is uh, system status check one is instance status check so once this resource status check pass then our server will be available so I'm gonna pause this video and once this uh, server is available is it then uh, I will continue this video all right, so now the EC2 server is in uh, OK state. You can see both of the status check passed. So uh, quickly, what we're going to do, we're going to add a tag to our EC2 server abuse volume. So for that, we're going to go to this storage section. And this is our uh, EBS volume. And we're going to open it in a new tab. So this is our EBS volume. And we're going to tag it. So the tags, tags uh, are used to identify your resources. So here we're gonna add the tags. So we're gonna add tag something like uh, uh, key. So okay, tags are always a keep your value. So uh, we're gonna call it uh, name and value as test EBS. All right. So after that, we're gonna save this one. So this tag is attached to this EBS volume. So now we can see that we are under this North Virginia region and uh, the service that we're gonna use to do this automated backup for us is uh, called Lifecycle Manager. So under the Lifecycle Manager, I'm gonna click this one and uh, right now we're gonna set one Lifecycle Manager for our recently created EC2 server. So uh, here, there are a few options. One is EBS snapshot, snapshot policy, and there is EBS backed AMI policy, and there is cross account copy event policy. Uh, well, uh, we're gonna go with this EBS snapshot policy. So here, uh, target resources, this, this could be two kind of like, uh, two type of resources. One is volume, one is the instance. Uh, earlier in this video, we created uh, a tag for our EBS volume and attached to that. So that's why we're going to use the volume one. So let's go with the volume and the target resources. Uh, we're going to tag it like name and the value is test EBS. All right, so after that, uh, now we have to give it a name of this uh, policy. So we're gonna call it test policy. And then we have to create this IAM role. So by default, let's go with the default role. We won't create a new role for ourselves. So under this default role, here you can see it's a JSON uh, a policy, which uh, provides some sort of access to do this whole backup stuff. And after that uh, here, uh policy status we can say like policy status to enable well we can go to the next section now and here we will have to set up the scheduler so the first one let's uh, go with the name uh, that is schedule one and the frequency uh daily is a daily snapshot that's okay and every 24 hours so that means only once in a uh day it will take a snapshot of our ebs volume and the retention type is count so count so uh retention step if we put uh, five or seven in here so the seven means our our EBS volume snapshot will be retained uh, to seven days. 
All right, so that's the first uh, schedule, and uh, there are some advanced features too, like copy text from the source. That's not uh, we want to do for now. And the other features that I talk about, like do the cross region copy, we can also enable it from here. If we click here and see cross re uh, region copy, so we if we want to enable this feature, we have to just click this one in here, and here we need to choose the region. So for that, uh, we're gonna choose uh, another AWS region, which should be US West one and expire. Let's also put seven. So after seven days, it will also expire from the sender region and the KMS key will use the default KMS key in here and uh, everything looks okay. And cross account sharing. Uh, so if we want to do a cross account sharing, we can also do that. So what do you mean by the cross account sharing? Well, uh, if you do have multiple AWS accounts and you want to share some uh, snapshot of your EBS volume to another AWS account, you can enable this feature. So uh, uh, th from the other account can access these snapshots too. So after that, I'm gonna just review the policy. So the review policy here, all the, disk, uh, all the settings that we have defined earlier, we can see all of it in here. And after that, uh, we can just hit this click policy. So here, one important thing to uh, notice that is the retention in standard here is seven most recent snapshots. So that means we'll have our server backup till seven days. After that, the backups will be deleted automatically. And uh, this is the same thing for our uh, uh, cross region backup too. So after if I hit to create policy in here, now we see we do have a policy a data lifecycle manager policy where uh, it is pointing to our EBS volume uh, and it will take, create a snapshot of our EBS volume every once in a day and it will also copy the snapshot to another region. So in this way, we don't have to worry about our EBS volume backup because everything is automated now. We can just sit and relax. And uh, if it's needed, we can always restore our data from this backup. Congratulations guys for reaching this far of this video. Today we have covered a very important thing uh, in AWS EC2 that is how to do an automated backup for our EC2 servers. So it will make sure that uh, your data is well protected and if you are planning to create a DR plan for your application, this backup strategy will definitely help you with uh, EC2 servers. So if you guys have any questions related to this uh, backup strategy, please let me know under this comment section and I'm gonna reply you back in a very short period of time. Time. Well, thank you so much guys for watching my videos. It means a lot. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel so that you can see my upcoming videos. If you want me to cover any specific uh, service related to AWS, Azure, Google Cloud or any sort of questions related to IT, just let me know and uh, I'm gonna cover that for you. Uh, that's all for today. Have a great and wonderful day.